Hello and welcome back to Raw and Unfiltered. My name is Chris and today we're going to talk about the mandate that was given to the human race because I think it's really, really important today. Now, as I'm discussing this, I want you to remember that we go all the way back to creation and we find that God did something very different from the human beings that he did from anything else in all of creation, nothing in the animal world, nothing like anything else. And then it says that he breathed his breath of life into him. That's the translation, right? Now, the actual Hebrew in the Aramaic and the actual original ancient Hebrew is actually more uh, called the word neshama, right? Now, neshama is actually the spirit, right? It's our consciousness that is something that we have that allows us to have communion with God and fellowship with God and intimacy with him. That is something that makes us different from all of the realm of creation. That neshama is a very unique thing to the human race. Now, what the Lord did is he told uh, Adam and Eve to, they had authority and to subdue, right? And to manage this dimension. Uh, in the Greek, uh, Jesus said in John 3, 16, we all know the passage, but we don't understand what we're saying. He said, for God so loved the world, cosmos. It's the dimension, the universe. God created this entire universe. He loves it and he wanted us to steward it. He gave that mandate to human beings, right? You and me and all the rest. That is our job. That is our duty. It is something that we have given to us before we ever did anything. Little babies that are born and are born to rule. They are given an authority because they are human beings. And here's the fascinating thing that I've never heard taught. But this is the point I really want to make today. Is that was never ever rescinded. Find me one place in scripture. Put it in the comments if you've got it. It was never rescinded. Not even after the fall. You'll go through the fall and you'll find out. Now doing this job, walking in this authority is going to have a lot of challenges. It's going to be harder than it would have been if they would have just stayed as they were before, right? Walking in a perfect state and walking in perfect union and communion with God. Now, why do I say all that? Because today we need and our, our, the earth is crying out. You know, Paul wrote in Romans 8 that creation groans, longing and yearning, aching, waiting for the sons of God to be manifested. Now, I, I want you to get something here again. We're going to get controversial because on Ron Unfiltered, we don't shy back from controversial subjects. And we can have civilized discussions about things that might be different from what we've actually thought. But I want you to notice that that passage says, waiting for the sons of God to be manifested, waiting for the human beings to rise up in their godly authority, right? And walk in the earth as they should. Why? Because Jesus said, I have all authority and heaven on earth has been given to me. And he's done, and then he did what? He gave it to us, his children, his church, his bride. We have that. We are to walk in that in this world. And you notice that Paul doesn't write in Romans that creation's waiting for the rapture. It's not waiting for Jesus to come back and make, no, 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 for us. That's our job. It's our role. You know, in 2 Peter 3, you're going to find something very fascinating is Peter's talking about living rightly and, and walking rightly in this world. And that as we do, we speed the day of his coming. You know, there are <laughs> um, amazing scholars um, over the last few hundred years who've looked at that and just said, hey, I don't understand it, but there is zero uh, doubt in the Greek, this means altering time. That is a word that plays that you would use to alter and to change time. I believe that we speed the day of his coming by walking in the authority that we have today. And we do that by bringing his kingdom down here. Now, the one thing I want to encourage you about today is you see how I want you to notice something here about how Eve was sidetracked from the authority and Adam and Eve both fell into this, right? And that was the pursuit of vain knowledge. Look, I got started in the internet uh, back in 94, 95. All we had back then was AOL. Uh, there really was an internet. I had helped build some of the first projects. I had a privilege in doing that. But I, I, I've watched the whole evolution of the internet. And when we started, we said, hey, if we'll just give everybody access to knowledge and connection, wow, wow we're going to build this utopian world. I'm telling you, everybody thought that from the Jeff Bezoses to whoever else. And what's happened is, is the opposite. What we've learned now from this little experiment, right, is that you give people a bunch of knowledge and look at what's happened to us. We are more divided than we ever were. I, I watched this. Uh, it's amazing to me how divided we are, how opinionated we are, how much we're spending all of our time on the internet running down rabbit holes that don't do much of anything. Here's my encouragement to you. If Eve would have just stayed focused upon Jesus, 
keeping that intimacy with him, flowing in harmony with him, things would have been totally different. But the enticement to go running down some mystery that she didn't have, some deeper realm of knowledge, right? Oh, that's what, that's the carrot that Satan dangled. And I'm telling you today, please listen to me on this. He is dangling that carrot in a way I have never seen in my life. There are so many rabbit holes that you can run down on the internet, so many things to search out. Let me tell you what you need to search out. The beauty, the magnificent supremacy of Christ. Get absorbed in his nature and his love. I'm just finishing a book right now called Rakam, R-A-C-H-A-M by Chain Ben Torah. It's an amazing book about the depth of God's love for us, his tender mercy for us. It's an amazingly beautiful book. I That's what I'm trying to focus on right now because, I, hey, look, at it's not that I'm not tempted with rabbit holes. I mean, I have this channel. We have a lot of rabbit holes. But I tell you what, we have to keep the supremacy of Christ. We have to walk in our authority. And the only way we can walk in that authority is when we're in communion with him and fellowship with him. Now, I'm going to make a video after this, and we're going to talk about some of these things, but and I'm going to do it in this context, but I want to close out this video and just encourage you today that you have authority if you are in Christ. And if you're in Christ, you're walking in truth, you're walking in love, and you want the kingdom of God down here because that's your lover, right? It's his kingdom. You're betrothed to Christ, and he wants his kingdom here. Let me, let me point another thing out real quick. In the Lord's Prayer, the first thing that Jesus tells us to ask for is what? Your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth just as it is in heaven. God wants his kingdom to come down here. He legally finished it at the cross. We know that from Colossians, right? He disarmed the powers and authorities. He, he embarrassed them and shamed them, right? But it's our job to walk it out, our job. And the church has been making advances and then retreat, making advances and then retreat. We still haven't taken this dimension and subdued it and turned it back over to Christ. I don't align myself with the Dominion guys or any of these people. I don't, I'm not aligned with any of that stuff. I'm just telling you, simple scripture. You can find these things out on your own. You'll find in, in, in Revelations 20, I believe it's 20 and 21, it says that the bride has gotten herself ready. She has prepared herself, meaning that she's walking in that kingdom authority and she's proven herself worthy. You know, David had several wives, but you can tell there was something about him that he wasn't satisfied and he wasn't happy. He needed a queen. Now, he went about it the wrong way, and the Lord rebuked him for that, of course, and he had to suffer because he went about it the wrong way. But you know what? Bathsheba ended up being that queen. She co-ruled with him. Every man wants a woman who can co-rule with him. Every woman wants a man that she can trust, that she knows will be a good leader. I'm telling you, we are the bride. In this sense, we're the feminine. Jesus is our leader. We need to show and to prove out our faith and our love for him and our taking his interest at heart. It's just about love. It's not about law and legalism and religiosity and church programs. No, it's about the truth of Christ. It's about knowing him and loving his heart. Okay, so that's my encouragement to you. Walk in that. I'm going to make another video now. We're going to dive into a little rabbit hole for a minute.